Talk to me about what fight week is like for you, man. At this point in your career, I mean, you've been doing this for so long, top of the game for so long. I mean, are there nerves? Are there excitement? Is there what's what, what is the emotion of a fight week like for you? Uh, I am. I'm excited. Obviously, we all get nervous, and the guys have said they're not nervous at all. It's probably a dangerous spot to be in, right? You, the, this game requires a certain amount of nerve. Um, but the, my excitement definitely outweighs any level of nervousness. Um, I feel like I just saw you guys not too long ago. Yeah. And, and I like this rhythm, I like this pace that I'm on. Nice. You, know, you talk about the reason you wanted this fight is because he seemed like the more dangerous guy. Now, a man in your position who's got records to break and things, I would think you take the easier fight. Take the one you think, the guy you think is less dangerous, right. you know, because it's safer. You, know, you feel better about it. Right. Why, why is that not the attitude? There's, there's a little strategy behind it. You know, I feel like I feel like a guy so young and Dominic Reyes, he, he's only going to get better. Right? He's, so, he's so new in the game. So um, I want to take him now while, while he's still fairly inexperienced. And I think we all know that I do better in rematches. So when he does come back, you know, hopefully I can dominate him even more uh, in, in even more dominating fashion than I am going to on Saturday. Right. Um, and, and then uh, the other half of it is just uh, striking while he's hot. He's hot right now. And uh, like I said uh, at the press conference, you know, I don't want to wait. And I don't want to wait too long. You know, I want to give people the fights when, when both fighters are, are hot. And, and he's hot. And so that's what I'm giving the people. You said yesterday, I would kind of gotten the idea that you weren't interested in Corey Anderson, like it didn't excite you. But yesterday you said he's got a chip on his shoulder that you want to chew on a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, so, I want to eat it. So if, he, so if he wins, I mean, is that a fight that does excite you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Corey Anderson, he's extremely versatile. And just the way he went in there with full confidence against Johnny Walker, just, just chewed him up. Um, it shows me uh, that he has he has that fire that I'm looking for. John, when Reyes has said a few things this time, I know it doesn't necessarily annoy you, but you just confused in the things he says. Like he says, uh, he hasn't fought an athlete like me, which I mean, like you said yesterday, everyone in the UFC is probably a good athlete. Yeah. And then he says, oh, I know how to study tape, and he's talking to the, the team that's most famous for studying tape and MMA. Are you confused at the choices of the angles he's taking in this uh, build-up? Yeah, I think I think he's reaching. I think he's reaching, and. Uh, and my job is just to is just to call him out on his silly comments, and you know, like when a guy is hanging on to these lab, these these wild ideas to uh, David, David, Dave. You might get like a small coffee. Thank you. Yeah, I, was, I woke up this morning. I didn't drink any water. Uh, woke up pretty late. I'm glad I got a lot of sleep though. Um, yeah, I think he's reaching. He's trying to hang on to these ideas to like pump himself up. And my job is just to take his ideas away and send him into the fight with nothing, pretty much. And and it's easy to do that because you know, you know, like when you say things like Weidman beat Anderson and I beat Weidman, this is gonna give me the the, the magic that I need. Huh? What are you freaking talking about? Like, like silly shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like. Or you haven't fought an athlete, and, or you know, or you haven't fought a Latino, and like all this stuff. Like it's about race. It's like, what are you talking about, dude? It's like it's about skill setting. I've, I've, I've fought guys from all over the world with different ethnicities and different cultures behind them, and it has made no difference. Why do you, you know? So he's just silly. He's reaching for anything he can find, and uh, let him have it. Have you noticed that when you called him out saying, oh, why, why do you go bring up party favors, that he sort of immediately stopped going that route and he didn't want to talk trash anymore? Yeah. So do you think this, like you said, he's just reaching, he's just trying to find any sort of identity he can to get into this fight? I, I, think, I think he knows that he's over his head and he's he knows that he may be... I don't want to say that he doesn't belong here. I don't know. I just th I think he doesn't think before he speaks. That's ultimately what it is. And then it, he finds himself backtracking. Like if you watch the Ariel Hawani interview when when Ariel asks him um, what you mean about the athlete thing and how he was like, oh, you know, you just if you don't get it, I guess you just don't understand. It's just like he can't even back up his silly thoughts. You know, I just think he needs to slow down, think before he speaks. I mean, even with the bipolar thing, yeah, he called me bipolar. It's like, do you know how many people in the world are losing their homes, losing their marriages, losing their jobs? Like, bipolar is something that can come onto you in, in, in your later years in life. It's like, it's a very serious mental illness. And the fact that he just rattles stupid, rattles freaking things like that out of his mouth, is just, 
Yeah. He's an asshole, really. You, uh, you won your first world title in 2011, I think, and he made his pro debut in 2014. Even, even if you win on Saturday, we're now reaching the era where guys are finally who grew up watching it. It was always said about GSP, one of the reasons why he's the best of all time is he beat like, three generations. You, or potentially, if you do this for 10 years, could beat four generations. Is that something you think about? I haven't really thought about it, no, but you know, my, my goal is just to be here for an extremely long time, a very long time. Um, you know, I want to be here for the whole next decade, and I want to be the champion for this next decade. And, you know, I look at Daniel Cormier as, as an inspiration um, for him to be the champion at 40 years old, dominating guys much younger than him. He lets me know that if I do the right things, thank you, sir. He lets me know if I do the right things and really take care of myself. Uh, there's no reason why uh, we can't keep up with this uh, this next generation of fighters, or well, this next uh, decade of fighters. So that's the goal. That's the motivation. Thank you for the motivation, Dan Cormier. You, uh, you appeared on ESPN yesterday with Max Kellerman and Steve Smith. Yeah. Like an yeah, it was, I think they wanted it to be a little bit more hairy than I allowed it to be. Do you think it's more hairy or they're just trying to appeal to the general audience and so perhaps nice cornering could be? But... Um, I think Max was definitely trying to lay it on me, you know, for sure. I, I think I don't think any of the questions he asked were uh, softballs. I think he was trying to be a little controversial with me and, and uh, I was really proud of myself for the way I handled the situation. I definitely felt like I took the high road. There was a, a thing with Stephen A. Smith and Joe Rogan recently where Stephen A. Smith said stuff about Donald Cerrone and Joe Rogan said he doesn't really understand MMA so he shouldn't say his comments. Do you think people like Max Kellerman and Stephen A. Smith have a responsibility to better understand the sport when they cover it? Absolutely, absolutely. You guys are going to. Hats off to Stephen A. Smith, by the way. Um, always been, you know, I, I, I think he's a tremendous reporter. And, but you're absolutely right. I think he does need to do more homework. We need to go back and maybe watch some of those pride fights. You know, you need to go back and start at UFC 1 and really do your homework. That way you know not only who we all are, but you know positioning, you know technique, you know a few submission names. I doubt they're at that level, and I would love to uh, encourage them to, to get at that level. You know, if you're a true professional, that's what you do. So a lot of the narrative has been focused on Dominic's undefeated record, but not so much about you being the first guy that's undefeated that he's faced in the Octagon. Do you think something's lost in that? Yeah, something's lost in that, but I think it's just, I think it's the people reaching um, to build him up, you know, he's undefeated. At the end of the day, if you look at who he's undefeated against, you know, he's never been in a situation like this, um, fighting someone who's not only undefeated as well, but somebody who's just, you know, double the experience as him. Um, you know, everyone's talking about his athleticism, but I mean, I come from a family of all world champions, so um, I'm cool kind of taking the, the back road and letting people build him up. I, I don't feel like I really need it. I feel like my, my work speaks for itself. Absolutely. And uh, before the OSP fight, you told me, uh, you know, you look at fighting like a test. Yeah. You know, so how would you categorize like the, the level of difficulty of the test in prepar preparing for a dominant? Dominic Reyes is a test. He's definitely a test. You know, I felt like I needed to get uh, physically stronger at this camp, so I really uh, worked on my, my physical strength a lot. Um, I, I've, he, he's just brought out something else to me. I, I've studied so extensively for this fight. Um, for him to be so kind of inexperienced, there's something inside of me that I tell you know, like, John, you cannot take this guy lightly. He, in a way, he could be more dangerous than the guys that are more experienced just because he doesn't know any better. You know what I mean? Like, when you listen to him talk, he, he just says, he's so emotional, he's so all over the place. He just wants to fight. He doesn't really care if he wins, he doesn't care if he loses. He just wants to give it all he got. So like, when you're fighting someone like that, you gotta take a step back and like, you're dealing with a wild dog here. You know what I mean? You can't just reach in there and get bit. You gotta come at him with a really strategic approach, you know? And, and that's exactly what I'm prepared for. He's gotten me and my teams complete undivided attention and we're taking him very, very seriously. Do you think you would have given him that respect if he hadn't kind of riled you up a little bit, if he hadn't thrown the the, the verbal jabs your way, do you think you would have still given him that amount of respect or yeah. does that make you give a guy more respect when it's like a, a rivalry almost? You know, um, I feel like I feel like I know a lot of guys like him. And, and, and living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I feel like I know a lot of guys like him. One thing you, you know when you, when you live in Albuquerque is uh, he's going to bring it. He's going to bring it. You know, he, there's guys, I see guys out at the club who don't know a lick of martial arts who, and the culture is like, yo, I'll, I'll fight you, bro. I don't, I don't care. I'll, I'll give it all that guy. You know, if you knock me out, so what? You know, so I know, okay, he, he there's, a there's a similar vibe 
um, but he's actually backed up by some martial arts techniques. So I know that I got to bring it, and uh, that's exactly what he's going to get. So early, early on, he was talking about interviews, like he said he was going to knock you out. And since, like, similar to other statements, he's backed off of that, yeah. and now he's kind of said, I just, see, I just see, you know, getting my hand raised. Do you think that's, like, something going on mentally with him to where he's, like, not as confident anymore, or...? I, I think he's just in a very, he's very, he's a very emotional fighter. He's a very emotional person, you know. He'll, if he's sad, he'll he'll come out, like, if you watch some of his interviews, he's like, it seems like he can't even breathe, you know. Like, the anxiety and the emotions kind of taking over him sometimes. And then other times, he's laughing and playful and, and just speaking out of his ass, you know what I mean? Um, one thing about saying that you're going to knock somebody out is it, what you're doing is you're putting all your eggs in one basket. I never claim that I'm going to finish the fight. I, I say that I'd like to finish the fight. Um, and I can predict that I'm going to finish the fight, but I never guarantee people that I'm going to finish the fight. Um, when, you, when you say that you're going to knock a person out and when you find yourself going into round four and I'm still here looking at you, you're breathing hard and I'm not, it can cause a sense of panic, like, oh boy, my plan didn't work. I thought I was going to get a first round knockout, and here we're going into round two, you know what I'm saying? So he's just adding pressure for, um, for himself to say he's going to knock out. I'm like, hey, I'm going to find a way to win. What, what, what round are you going to win, John? Or, or how are you going to beat him? Is it going to be a submission? I never, I, I try not to never claim that type of stuff, because that adds pressure on me, and we don't need added pressure at this level. So so I think that's why he's, he's backing up on the idea of knocking me out. It's like, first of all, there's only one person who, who's wobbled me in a fight, and I mean, if you look at my last fight against Thiago Santos, Thiago will come running forward with left hook, right hook, uppercut, uppercut, boom, 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 boom. Every single one of his shots were knockout blows. And uh, something happens when I'm in there where my senses are higher, and I'm able to just boom, 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 boom. And it's not even technical, it's not even technical weaving. Boxing weapon. It's just like a. It's a gift. It's a gift, man. I feel like Ali had it too a little bit. He he could do like this and just make you miss somehow, right? And I feel like I have that too. And I don't think people give me credit for that. It's like very rarely do I really get caught clean with a shot. And Dominic's the type of guy where he's not gonna be running at me like Thiago Santos with five punch combinations. Dominic's gonna wait back. And he's gonna throw a straight left, or he's gonna throw a or or a round left. It's like one shot at a time, one shot. So if I can block a five shot combination from Tiago, I'm pretty sure I can block his very basic left shot, left kick, low kick, mid kick, left shot. It's like, so I don't think he realizes the level of defense he's getting ready to go on there against. No one's talking about that, and I'm just like. John, it seems every time you say, right, I'm not talking about Israel Adesanya anymore, he does an interview and mentions your name again. Where are we with that? And, and he's going to be here this week, you might even cross paths. Is that something you'd even like to happen just to be like, are we going to do this? Are we not going to do this? No, honestly, I have, I have, I have, I have no interest in Israel at the end of the day. Um, Anderson Silva was a guy that everyone wanted to see me fight, and I never wanted to do it because I had so much respect for Anderson. Um, and I feel the same way with Izzy, but it, but it's not coming from a place of respect. It's like my my career isn't based around fighting him. Him to fight me, it, it would be huge for his resume. Um, but me, you know, I feel like I, I already have so many legends under my resume, and he's not even a legend. You know what I mean? We've all seen that video of, of him fighting some Alex guy and, and catching a clean overhand right. So he's very human to me. Like he's he's not this special guy that you know. I, I don't I don't see what everybody else is seeing in him. I think I think you know his whole anime stuff and how he's all antic with his hands and all this crazy stuff. I think that's kind of entertaining a certain fan base. But for me, it's like dude, I would slap you. Get out of here, kid. Do you think you've ever got the credit for becoming a world champion so young? Because I think the older we get, the more we realize how young 23 actually is. Yeah. You know, honestly, to be dead honest, I feel like I feel like it's going to be harder to break that record because of where martial arts is going. You know, when, when I joined in the sport, um, I mean, I, I wanted to get Shogun, who's definitely an honorable guy to get it from. I mean, he was very first. Uh, he had uh, great jiu-jitsu, great striking, but his wrestling, there's a huge hole in his wrestling. And, it, and I just so happened to be a wrestler, and I filled in that hole, took him down, and ultimately pretty much finished the fight on the ground, right? I think in the future, you're not going to be fighting champions with holes like that. I think the future champions are going to have elite jiu-jitsu, elite wrestling, and elite kickboxing. So uh, in order for a 23-year-old 
uh, to come up and become a world champion, he's gonna he's gonna have to be trained um, in everything, and he's gonna have to have no holes in this game, or else I don't see anybody else beating him. In terms of all the out of the cage stuff that you've gone through over and over again, I think. Everyone wants to pin it on you. At 23, 24, 25, you're 26. You're still a young man. You're still learning. You're still growing up. Yeah. Do you think you ever got a fair shake about that? Um. I can't play a poor me role. You know, I've done a lot of wild stuff. You know what I mean? I can't play poor me. Um, but at the same time, you know, this sometimes I think about it this way. My little brother and my older brother are in the NFL, and from the time they left college, they had programs to, to really show them how to be a professional athlete. The, the NFL, their team provided them with with a driver that they can call 24 hours. In the NFL, there's a chaplain that they can call 24 hours. There's group meetings. There's 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 fellow guys to be around to encourage you. There's. I was just kind of thrown into like, okay, here you're fairly famous now, and, and here's some money too. You know, it's like when you come from nothing, it's and and at that age, it can be a lot to handle. It can be a lot to juggle. Um, I don't think I was. I don't think I had enough mentors in my life at that point, and, uh, and I'm glad I finally figured it all out. It just reminds me of that Sean Stars, that like when like, a kid actor or Justin Bieber gets famous, and they go up around, everyone goes, well, they're just a kid, and they go get one money. At 23, you are a kid in this game. I just yeah. wonder if you ever felt like that meant they never gave you that to master because of what he is a young man. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people look back on, on some of the things I've done and say, you know, you know, he's young, and, and I'm still fairly young. I mean, at, at 30, I feel like there's there's a lot more lessons I can learn. Um, but but at the end of the day, with, with great responsibility, you know, with great talent comes great responsibility, and, and it was my job to to uh, figure it out a little faster. And, and they say guys mature a little slower than women, right? So. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at 30, I'm finally starting to feel like, okay, John, I'm getting it. I'm starting to get not how not to fuck up. <laughs> and, uh, and let's see how it goes. John, you mentioned Australia earlier this week about wanting to, you know, fight over there, fight overseas, kind of expand your brand. And how important is it to you to have not just, you know, one, but multiple fights, you know, in different countries? so different audiences can experience? You know, I, uh, I'm hearing rumors. I'm hearing rumors that, uh, that for this arena, there's never been more people in attendance. And, uh, and what that's showing me is that, uh, is that maybe I need to step outside of Las Vegas and start fighting in these markets where people won't see me too often. Won't see me too often. Um, I think that's gonna. I think that's gonna be important. So, um, yeah, if, if I can, if I can possibly break numbers here in Houston, I can only imagine what could happen if I went to Australia or one of these other countries where they never expect to see me. I think that people come out, and that's what it's about: giving love, sharing it, and. Um, Spreading this. I know, I know, I know you talk with you all in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. I bet I'd be an even bigger. <laughs> I know you talk with uh, Kamaru, kind of like jokingly about you know UFC Africa. Is that something that you really want to push for and make happen? I would love to, man. I would love to. I just did my uh, my ancestry.com, and I don't. I'm not sure what I am yet, but when I find out, all you guys are going to know <laughs> what, what type of warrior I am. John, back in Thank 2011. You guys, we get ready to go. We have